Welcome to the Chef United Way podcast number two. The first time was so nice, we had to do it twice. Do you know what, Ollie? I've always wanted to say that phrase. Yeah, I know you have. Um, <laughs> I really, really wanted to ruin you. I really want to go in and be like, yeah, yeah, you're right. You have wanted to say it. You've been trying to say it all afternoon. It took you a while to get it right. But no, I'll it pop, is nice. I'll pop it in. Welcome to the Chef United Way podcast number two. We enjoyed it so much the first time. We did it second time. No, what's the saying? I wanted to say the saying. Welcome to the Chef United Way podcast number two over on the Clips channel. We enjoyed it so much the first time. No, I said the same thing again. Right, let me write it down. Let me write it down. But no, it is nice. Always great to be back. Oh, yeah, it is. And we've gone for a little white and red ensemble, haven't we? We have, yeah. You know, we've got to make sure that we're on we're on brand. We've got the colour scheme. And um, we just, if Hal ever joins us, he's going to have to wear a black t shirt and really just cement the look. Exacto mundo, mate. Exactly. What have you been up to then since the last time we did a podcast? Oh, not much, to be honest. It feels as though really long weeks. I don't know if it's because it was so hot for so long, but every week felt like it lasted a month. It's been a little bit insane, but had quite a nice weekend just gone, you know. Took my dad to cricket for Father's Day, just Yorkshire against Derbyshire at Queen's Park. Um, Just about avoided the rain because, of course, the one time I decided to try and do something fun was when the rain came. What about yourself? Have you had a good couple of weeks? How was Father's Day with Louie? Yeah, really good, mate. Really good. Can't complain at all. It was really, (laughs) really special. Uh, We went out for tea as well afterwards as well. We went to Elmwood Farm, for anyone that knows, round my neck of the woods. Uh, I had a lovely car for it. I put loads and loads of mint sauce all over everywhere and ruined my my dinner, really. like I like mint sauce. I didn't like as much as what I put on. Yeah, I mean, I'm a massive mint sauce fan. So when you said it, I was like, oh, but you, there is a limit and you don't want yeah. you, know, you don't want all mint sauce. You've got to get a really fine balance because a carver is just not worth ruining. You've got to get your carvery mm. on point. Yeah. My problem with a carvery though, mate, and especially there, and I think it's most carveries, you buy a big plate, yeah, like a large, and you don't get anything extra. It's like you still have to buy more pigs in blankets. You still have to buy another Yorkshire pudding. And it's like yeah. I can have a small plate and just pile it up that way rather than piling it that way. So I don't know why I bought a large. Yeah, but it's it's that feeling, isn't it? You want to buy a large. I think, where is it that I normally go? I normally go to the one on the roundabout Toby. if you're going out to Manchester. Not Toby Carvery. Not Toby Carvery, but they do give you, you get an extra piece of meat and an extra Yorkshire pudding if you go for the large. Oh. That feels like a nice deal. I don't mind taking that one. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely better. But Elmwood need to uh, step it up, really, to be honest. And it, it was during all that lightning and thunder and stuff. It was throwing it down, lightning, thunder, which was pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, pretty scary thinking that we, we may die at any point. Yeah, I was convinced. So I've been convinced this weekend that the world's come to an end. Uh, not to get too, you know, conspiracy theory, um, because I think that'll turn people off. But so I was doing, and this sounds a lot more professional than it was. I was doing landscaping for my friend's garden the other day. Um, again, sounds more professional than it was. Basically, we swung the pickaxe around and put some sleepers in, put some turf down. It was great. But halfway through the day, I genuinely found a dragonfly that must have been, it was like from the tip of my finger to about there. It was the biggest dragonfly I've ever seen in my life, and his cat killed it. But I was like, following the dragonfly, then really loud storms. I was like, this is the end of days. Like, that was a locust. (laughs) Everything's going to fall apart now. We've got planes coming, batting down. I considered not going to work, to be honest, Monday morning. I was like, you know, is there any point going to work? World's coming to an end. Might as well just sack it off. Alas, the world's not ended yet, and it turns out I still need a little bit of money so we're gonna to have to go to work and you know maybe if the world ends it'll do so at a more convenient time yeah 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 hopefully <laughs> do you know what i wanted to mention um on sunday i ran into a lady in the woods this sounds weird already walking oh, okay. from where i live to uh st george's park uh football at uh Westfield I went to what I go and watch my nephew play football in there quite a lot and uh, as me and my, me and my wife and, and my son were, were walking through the woods this lady 
And as you do, you walk past someone higher, higher, higher. higher. Yeah, as yeah. as we do with British people. Um, and uh, as she was walking past, she went, "Excuse me," and I was like, expected to say, "Oh, it's, it's Crystal Peaks that way." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, just down there on, on the right." And she was like, "Are you in good nick?" Weird, <laughs> so weird. Like, I at the match, you kind of not expect it, but you kind yeah. of are ready for it. At any point, someone could say, oh, you're in good nick, or oh, Chef United Way, or whatever. Oh, I had somebody the other week say, my granddad, he was about probably 18, 20, something like that. My granddad loves your videos. And I was like, that that, that, that felt better yeah. than a kid saying, I love your videos, because it's yeah, like yeah. so good to get out there to all generations. Yeah, I, I like that. I think that's good. I admittedly, I'm sure... I get recognized a hell of a lot less than you or Hal do. Uh, nobody ever says anything. I think I've been recognized about four times, um, but I'm okay with it. You know, I get. You're really on the channel more than I am. I am at the minute. It's, you're not <laughs> wrong, but yet, you know, I just don't have that outreach. I've got one of those faces that people forget. You know, you either reference me as a hairy beaver or you leave me alone. Uh, that is reference to a comment, not a rude joke. Just to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> that I, it, until it came out of my mouth, I've not quite realised what the guy was calling me, and now it all comes back. Um, <laughs> well, I've took, I took offence actually now. Now that I've realised, anyway, <laughs> what was that <laughs> Yeah, I, oh, I get really awkward. People like walk over, and like one guy just took a hand out, and I just shook it, and he was like, "Hiya," and I was like, "Hiya," and just walked on. Two. And then like two minutes later, went, "Oh, I was supposed to." Oh, I'm supposed to engage. Like, hi, okay, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I must know you from somewhere. See you later. Um, I need to work on my public facing stuff anyway. I think if that happened to me in the woods, I probably would have just, yeah, well, no, it's not me. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> No, she she was absolutely lovely. Um, she said, "I think I'm not going to say how old I thought she was no, because I could get oh, myself not, in trouble." Not not twenty years off. She looked about yeah. She might have been twenty one, kind of thing. That's that's yeah that's yeah. Don't Give or take five years. Yeah, because that yeah. could get you in real trouble. <laughs> <laughs> No, but she said she watches the Jeffy Night Away. So a big shout out to her. She didn't give me a name, but uh, no, it was lovely. It was lovely to speak to her. Yeah, I think I've got used to it a little bit more recently, but um, I'm always one of these people when I get recognized at matches. I go to shake their hand before they do. So they'll say, Oh, you're Nick from Jeffy Night Away. And I like say, Thank you and shake their hand. And I'm thinking, They've not given me a compliment. Well, they've, <laughs> they've said, I recognize your face. That could be one of any reasons and they might hate my guts so me saying thank you and putting my hand out is probably not the right way to go about it no maybe not you could be inviting difficulties as well and if they come in for a hug you're already in an awkward spot um i think yeah. for me i'm more of a like hi yay yeah i am sorry oh welcome i don't know are you happy or sad that it's me <laughs> Oh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Anyway, uh, let's 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 move on. Uh, we haven't uploaded too many videos on the channel as of late, uh, and I think the main reason for that is just not a lot's happening at the moment, is it? And and I don't know about you, but I think a lot of people have said it online where it's just it. We're not that excited because we're not uh, being linked with loads of players. The possibility of, of the takeover is still up in the air we're not sure what's going on radio silence from the prince radio silence from a lot of people other than darren smith on on twitter he seems to be like kind of debunking lots and lots of theories and and it's like you kind of just want a little bit of hope don't you and, and i'm just trying to think what else we could talk about right now because in the last few years i've gone hell for leather in between because it's like you just want to keep videos going and youtube sometimes doesn't push you out as much when the new season comes uh, if you've not been posting that many videos so we've tried to keep it up you've done your fantastic series on who we could sign on a budget uh, obviously did say well, we'll talk about did say i'm sure in this podcast uh, but are you are you excited about the new season or are you similar to other fans uh, it's a weird one really isn't it because I want to be excited. Like we've just been promoted to the Premier League and it feels like I really should be so excited and I should be up for it and I should be going. But you're right. I think I think it's really difficult to be excited when it feels as though we're fighting with one hand tied behind us back. Like we've not got any transfer rumours. 
the budget that we've got realistically doesn't feel like it's going to be enough to make us that competitive. It feels like a really negative time to be promoted. If anything, it's relief that we got promoted mm. in that thought of, Jesus, what position would we be in if we hadn't got promoted rather than an excitement that, oh, we've got promoted and now we're going to kick on and everything will be better. It's more of a, well, at least for 12 months, we're not going to be in a right mess. <laughs> uh, and so it's a weird one. It's, yeah, it's not, I don't think this is how promotion should feel. And it's weird. No. Yeah. You said that last season about where we were in the league as well. Yeah. So it felt a lo- not lukewarm that we got promoted because I think the end of the season we were great. We were great yes. early on. We put ourselves in a great position and then managed to just pull away. But we won a lot of games 1-0, we won a lot of games 2-1. And I'm not going to say sit, sit here and say it's a lukewarm season no. last season because we got promoted. I just feel like we've got promoted in better style before. And then we've got into this season having two of our players already taken away from us because they weren't our players to start off with. Then you've lost your club captain as well. And it sounds like Hecky wanted to keep him um, from what he was saying for the, for the dressing yeah. room. But you can't keep players just because, as Roy Keane said about, I think it was um, Henderson. They want him around the place. For what? what? What does he do? Car tricks? Does he has a sing song? Does he does quizzes in the evenings? Because in the dressing room, yeah, you do need a lot of characters, but they need to be good on the on the pitch as well. They need they to offer do. something. Especially in the position of United's budget, all of our players have got to be able to contribute and contribute effectively on the pitch. So I understand it, but it all just feels a bit. I think I said it. It was during that run when Middlesbrough were trying to chase us down. And we'd drop a little bit and then we'd go ahead again and we'd drop again. And we were never that close to being caught. But it was through that period, it was just like, I'm sure being promoted is more fun than this. Like we'd win 1-0 at Bramall Lane, which is fantastic. And we won. And so I was leaving Bramall Lane happy. But I wasn't leaving it overjoyed. Oh, thank God, look at that. We're still buzzing. We're going to get there. It was more of a, we've just about got over the line there. And oof, let's, mm. surely we need to kick on. It just, it always felt as though, it could be better than this. Or mm. previously it has been. And maybe that's because we were spoiled last time. And yeah. last time we did it with Wilder and with the excitement of that team and Leeds, we were pushing past Leeds rather than being mm. chased by Leeds. And so mm. that adds to the fun. Similarly with Warnock, I think it was the same situation. We were being chased by Leeds and it was always that kind of, oh, we're going to do it. We're better. We're just better. And it just didn't quite feel the same this time. But like I say, that's probably me being a spoiled brat rather than anything the club's doing wrong. Do you know what? <laughs> Possibly, not just saying you, I think we're all a little bit spoiled. We're all a bit entitled right now. And I think yeah. it's the fact that we've also been promoted in recent Pretty years, well. like, when it were Warnock, we were in the championship for what seemed about 50 well, years. My like, entire life. <laughs> yeah, Before yeah, Warnock. exactly. And then we spend so many years in League One and we're thinking, this is it. We're going to be a Charlton. Like, we're yeah. going to stay down there for however many years. And then Wilder takes us up 100 points. This is incredible. And then we're, we're, we're kind of underdogs in the championship. And then we fly up again. It's like, this is incredible. And then we get to a stage where we're ninth in the Premier League. We're looking to push for for European football. We, yeah, we get relegated, but we still think that we're going to go back up. And we still had that um, expectation of, of going back up. And now we've got there, it just feels like we were expected to. Punished, punished for expectation. But I think there's two other factors that do play a part. One of them is the transfer embargo from January. Yeah. That takes so much of the fun and excitement out of it because it became, rather than it being a, oh, wouldn't it be fantastic to be promoted? It became a, we have to get promoted because if we don't, God knows where we end up with the money situation in the way that it is. And so you then went from hope to demand. like And so the primary feeling is relief and not excitement. So that takes away from it a little bit. And you've got all that wider noise that was just going on constantly from January. But I think the other side of it is COVID. And I think it's really hard to explain the impact of that because we rode that wave to being ninth. When COVID hit, I think fifth in the Premier League, maybe sixth. Mm. And so we were on such a massive high. And then for 18 months, we were locked at home unable to go to the game, unable to be part of the journey of us coming back down. And so when you come back to Bramall Lane, 
and it's the first game is Jukanovic and it's Birmingham and we lose. We never really had a chance to be angry. We never had a chance to be mad and to be in the yeah. stand saying, this ain't good enough. Why are we getting relegated in historically bad ways? We never had the opportunity to really get out all of that frustration. And so that builds up and creates apathy. So now you're in a position where actually we never saw us get worse. We just experienced the period of being worse. And now we kind of, as a fan base, haven't had time to adjust from not being sick to then suddenly being in the championship. And that adjustment period is really, really difficult. And I hope that next season gives us that feeling back. We feel as though, right, actually, this is the point we were at when football stopped. Now we're back here. We're back on the journey again. And we can yeah. relate to the club with no expectations. With We're just trying to try and stay up. And if we come down next year, we're in a position where we've had time to deal with the fact that we got relegated and got worse, which we never got because we weren't there. And so you don't experience that anything like the same. So I think they play a massive fact that then made us a little bit more entitled than we could have been and took away some of the excitement. And maybe again, that's me. And maybe I'm completely misreading the feeling of lots of other fans, but that's kind of where I think I landed as part of that yeah. journey. Mm. Yeah, I can't put it as eloquent as you just put it. Um, but all I want to say is that I'm looking forward to being underdogs again. Yeah. Because we haven't been underdogs for quite a while, really. Under your kind of it, you could possibly say... We weren't underdogs, we were just rubbish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Und- <laughs> no, we weren't. No, no. We had the players. As Dizzy said, like, we'll come on to talking about Dizzy now. We might as well. I were... Yeah. I was going to mention about what he said about uh, Slavisi Kanovic because he was saying that he had the players at his disposal. They knew that they were good enough. It, they just weren't playing in the right positions. Yeah, yeah. And... And we can't be underdogs when we've got a team that pretty practically the same team that got promoted to the Premier League and most of the players that did really, really well in the Premier League as well. But um the 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 point that I was making before is that we weren't we're not putting up content on this channel for content's sake. Right yeah. now, we are we've got loads of ideas on a spreadsheet, but right now, one, I don't think f- the fans' appetite is massively there until a few positive things happen. Um, And really we've all been through like kind of, I'm, I'm in a, I don't really want to mention it. I might mention it in a couple of videos time, but I'm in a situation right now where uh, I'm struggling to kind of be creative, personal life and stuff like that. Uh, You've probably seen uh, and Hal mentioned it on the uh, Richie Humphreys uh, podcast, which was fantastic. by Outstanding. If you've not seen it, that really, really good. It really is. Hal did a fantastic job on that one. And I was going to be doing it, but it worked out perfectly that Hal knew more about Richard than I did uh, with him being older. And um, the fact that him and Richie have gone through something very, very similar and very serious recently. So I don't want to go into it too much, but uh, you've been kind of holding down the fort at the moment, I think, Holly. Um, I think the only reason why um, I did the Didsy one is because I've been trying to get Didsy on the channel for over a year now what i'll do is i'll i'll let i'll let uh, everybody in on kind of how it all came about because i messaged Didzy out of the blue uh, over a year ago when he got released by the blades i wrote you will be missed Didzy. it was a pleasure to watch you week in week out uh, and i know you've got loads left in the tank which i still believe i think it would have been easier last season if we'd have kept Didzy on uh, and i think we'd have scored more goals and uh, we might have even challenged burnley uh, and I put a big mistake to let you go. You'll always be a Blades legend. He replied the day after saying, Nick, thank you. I've seen some of your work and comments on me. Appreciate the love. And that's when I put, I always fly the Dizzy flag. I asked him about an interview and he said, yes, I will come on. And then he went on about four holidays. I think he said, <laughs> I've not been unattached from a club for a long time. And I think when he was trialing for the Blades, obviously he wanted to be in peak physical condition so that he could get in it feels weird saying that did had to trial um yeah, but he had to be in peak physical condition whereas he was kind of injured he was injured for the most of uh last yeah. or back end of last season so he just wanted a blowout go on holiday have a get some sun um and i think he went on three or four holidays and then he signed for derby and i'm like no and then to add insult to injury, he went off Instagram, which is where I was messaging him for like three months. And I'm like, this is dead in the water. <laughs> Never, ever getting this back. 
And then I think I just randomly checked to see if he was on Instagram, saw that he was probably two months ago. And then he said, let's get it done. Let's get it going. And uh, yeah, it's taken a bit of time, but we got there eventually. Did you enjoy it? Loved it. Absolutely loved it. I just think, I think we, we kind of reflected on this a little bit offline, but one, I'm really glad that you did it because I think you've been waiting so long to do Didze. Like that has been your dream. Uh, so I was delighted that you got the chance to do it. But secondly, he's just such a nice guy, isn't he? Like he's just nice. I like it's so. I know that everybody we meet and that we've spoken to, they're nice. They're all, but he's just so nice. <laughs> that is the. I came out of it just like oh, just love him. Like just shall we have him for another twelve months? Shall we? Just because I love him. <laughs> I I remember saying to my wife, "How can I possibly make Didsy my best friend forever?" without saying anything weird to him because like i just want him to be my best friend and when he said that ollie did you uh oh it was the uh it wasn't the podcast it was the clip he said about ollie mcburney being his best friend and i was like oh i want to be your best friend it's not fair <laughs> and you, got, well, you don't see ollie mcburney anymore so have you got any space for an opening i think something <laughs> <knocked out here. laughs> well i know that ollie mcburney lives in i think he lives in harrogate and mm. Didsy lives in Nottingham. So I'm closer. So surely, yeah. Sheffield to Nottingham, we can be friends. Oh, you can be even, even best friends, really. Like I say, you've yeah. got that proximity. I think that makes a difference. You've got yeah. to shoot your shot, Nick. If you don't shoot your shot, you're never going to know. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, one other thing from kind of behind the scenes that, that didn't get mentioned in the podcast was that he told me that he was moving to Notts County the next day because we recorded it on Friday night. I think it was about half past seven. Yeah. And he said something, what did he say now? Oh, if I, I said, is there anything off, off limits that I always say that to every person, anything off limits. And he's like, no, no, no. Oh, actually don't mention about where I might be going. And he's like, <laughs> it's where you expect me to go. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, right. Okay. He's um, going to be the best player in league two and possibly the best player to have played in league two since like Edgar Davids rocked up that year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I said to him, I shouted at him as well. Uh, I felt really bad about it afterwards, but it were all nice. I said to him, how can a, how can the best player in league one go and play in league two? But yeah, um, no. That's the question. And that's what everybody's waiting to see. But I fan yeah. like Notts County, surely. I've got to fancy them for... I think they're going to be better than Wrexham now. I think that's it for me. He's it's better tough, though, than isn't it? what they've got. Not as county are going to be good. Him and Langstaff, yeah. surely. Imagine the goals. Him and did say up front together. But what you've got to say is, though, that he played for Derby last season. He was fantastic. Scored so many goals, so many assists. And... and I've been told by so many people how good he was just yeah. on the ball, like ignore all the goals and the assists. However, Derby still finished seventh. So that just shows it's not all about one player. So yeah, you, you, you can drag him. Well, he dragged Sheffield United through that second Premier League season. Um, yeah, fair enough. If it wasn't for him, we'd have finished with a record low total, but we still didn't stay up. Let's move on to talking about a bit more about Sheffield United off the uh, off the pitch. Kyle Walker, Connor Cody. I think we've kind of gone past Connor Cody. Like no one's talking yeah. about Connor Cody anymore, and I think he'd be a really good addition. Whether he plays right centre back, central centre back, left centre back. Do you want to do you want to have a little bit on him? Because I don't think we should talk too much about him. No, I think Cody would fit our system perfectly. I understand why we might not move for him because if we have only got a limited budget, we, can we afford to spend any of it in non-priority areas? And it's the same. I'm going to say the same for Kyle Walker, really, albeit that that's very different in circumstance. But it's very much it. If it's going to cost us, say, four million quid to sign Conor Cody, it might be a bit less. Wolves want to get him off the books. They've got FFP. Everton didn't exercise their clause at 4.5, so you can negotiate it down. So let's, even if it's 3 million, for United, that's somewhere in the realm of about 20% of our overall budget. Now, do you want to be spending 20% of the budget on a position that you don't need? And that's a really difficult question to answer. And I think ultimately that will be what means we don't move for Cody. Walker, if there was any chance, 
I think even though it's not priority, even though it's an issue, I think he's the best top five right backs in the world still. Yeah. Maybe yeah. even top three. So if there's any chance he can play for you, you take him because he's so good that it's just got to be worth the gamble. Albeit that I again understand we've got Baldock, we've got Bogle, we don't need a right back and he would cake up the majority of the budget. And so I understand why we wouldn't, but when you're getting somebody who is at that level, I think surely you have to look at it. But then again, if he goes to Bayern Munich, we can't exactly say like, oh, I can't believe he's gone to them over us. Oh, what are we doing? <laughs> As if this was a realistic conversation. <laughs> do, do you know what? Bayern Munich might actually be doing us a favour here because if they have to pay money for him, yeah. it's not going to be a it's not going to be a massive amount, is it? Because he's got one year left on his contract at Man City. Pep clearly isn't that bothered about him. It's not a position that they're probably going to use that much next season as well, which he is didn't weird. Even start the Champions League final. I can't get my head around the fact that he didn't start the Champions League final. He is the best right. He's probably the best right back in the Premier League. And I love him. He's so good. He's fast. His defensive ability is just top quality. And when you watch the Champions League final, how many times did City get rinsed down their right side for a cross into the box? The chance that Lukaku misses, that absolute sitter, is down that side, rinses whoever was playing at fullback, was it Ake? And then he misses a really good chance. Same, DiMarco's header off the bar comes down that wing. First off, numerous crosses down that wing. It just, I couldn't believe he wasn't playing. Well, Pep Pep clearly prioritises attack over defence, doesn't he? That's what it is. What I was saying about Bayern Munich is the fact that they could spend 15, 20 million on him, something like that, to, to, to kind of buy him out of his contract. And then they might only sign him for a year or something like that. And then we might be able to get him on a free. Come on. Come on, Kyle. Do you remember Ryan Giggs, how fast Ryan Giggs was? He lost all his pace. Like 35, 36, 37, playing central midfield, barely moving. When is Kyle Walker going to lose his pace? Well, I think, I don't think Kyle Walker's going to lose his pace unless he has an injury. This is yeah. the thing now. At his age, the trouble that you've got is if one of his hamstrings goes, mm. that's him probably done for his speed because he's not got the recovery time at his age. And so that's where the worry and the risk is for me around Walker is if he goes to Bayern for two years, and at some point, one of his hamstrings goes. That's mm. that's really difficult to come back from. But I think his defensive ability is good enough that he would still be a standout player. I think he's got years in him. It's how long he wants mm. to go for and how much he feels he would lose if his pace was to go. Because I think he'd still have loads to offer, even without it. Yeah, and, and I think the only thing he's really got to win is an a international tournament. Oh, the right, championship, sorry. yeah. <laughs> Champion, uh, champions of championship. He'll never sing that. He'll never sing that unless, unless. That's all I'm saying. You know, he wants to complete a collection. There's a couple of things missing. <laughs> Let's crack on. Let's talk about, because you said at one point there that Cody and Walker aren't in positions, or Cody isn't in a position that we need to prioritise. However, yes. however. Do you know where I'm going with this? You're going to say we need a left centre-back, aren't you? We may need a left centre-back because apparently negotiations with Jackie Longthrow are not going very well. And I say Jackie Longthrow, yeah. but also need to throw Wes in there because who else is going to play in the net right now? Uh, Wes, Jackie Longthrow, uh, John Fleck and Ben Osborne. The last two, we don't need to worry about as much. But Jackie Longthrow, we don't have another left centre back right now, as Kieran Clark's gone back to Newcastle and obviously he's been let go. Uh, we may bring him in, but at the same time, the players that are here that we need to make to, to, to start next season, just get them signed up. I, this is kind of what I was alluding to before with the excitement of how are we skinned? Like, I, I'm not clever enough to understand the finances. I completely accept that. Darren is clever enough to understand the finances and he gives a really good breakdown of where the money's at, that we're not being shafted, that nobody's got their hand in till. But where's the money gone? <laughs> like, I can't get my head around the fact 
that we've just been promoted to the Premier League and we're saying that maybe we can't afford to give Jack Robinson a, a little bit of a wage rise to keep him at the club. Like We apparently have. It's apparently a tiny little bit of a raise. We don't know how much that is. Our, yeah, our... Our raise and Jack Robinson's raise will be completely different because of how much we're talking here. But yeah, I do think sometimes it can be a little bit of a slap in the face. If he's played at left centre back most of the season, he did have a really good season. Fair enough, he had a couple of hairy moments, but Jack Robinson deserves a new contract and he deserves a little bit of a bump. And I think, look, we all understand that Jack Robinson, I don't think any United fan watching this, is sat here saying, I want him to be our first choice left centre-back next season. Because we don't. We know that's an area that we want to improve on. But we still need a player there. Because right now, it's the same. I've got a little bit the same feeling with John Fleck. Is that at this very moment in time, we need a player. Anybody who can play on the left side of our centre midfield or who can play left centre-back. We just need a player. We haven't got anyone. Like... Is Norrington Davies going to be fit properly? Is he going to come back the same player? You don't know. So you need Robinson there to cover. At the minute, we've got Berger. We've got Norwood. Is Cooley Bally going to start at left centre mid? Like, clearly we're going to bring it. players in. And clearly those are the positions we're going to target. But until we are actually bringing players in, we cannot afford to lose the ones that we've got. Because otherwise, well, it like I say, it just all feeds into that feeling of frustration at the minute that comes through of how are we in this position having just got promoted? Like, it feels as though we've just been relegated and we're trying to like, oh, let's try and keep the players who are staying. When actually, we've been promoted. Everybody should want to stay. We should be really putting forward an image of positivity with people who want to stay at the club, with the club being able to keep the ones that we want and with us preparing and getting better, not worrying about losing players and getting worse. Seems yeah. bizarre. But again, I am not clever enough to understand what's actually going on. We'll try and see if we could get Darren on at some point yeah. to uh, to discuss everything. However, um, we'd like to find out a little bit more about these possible takeovers. 140 million for a Saudi consortium is what's been said, but we're apparently that's all, not not a pipe dream, but that's something that's far away from being yeah. a done deal. My, my fear, I don't know. Are the Saudis allowed to buy another club? I suppose technically, if you can prove you're separate to PIF, you probably can. But I know there's already conversations about like conflicts of interest. I know, obviously, there's a lot of talk coming up at the minute as well about how much they're invested already in Chelsea because Bowley has a secret private equity fund, doesn't he, that's paying for part of it. And then all of a sudden, all of these expensive flops from Chelsea have got multi-million pound deals to go and play in Saudi Arabia. So it'll be interesting to see what comes of that, if anything, because I just don't know what the rule is and how separate they would have to be from the Saudis who are already invested in the Premier League. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure that's something that Darren knows a little bit more about than we do. So like I say, we will try and get him on at some point. I'll happily park, you know, I have lots of moral beliefs and I um quite anybody who knows me knows that I am, have my moral beliefs and things that I talk about. But if Saudis want to buy United, I will throw them out the window. Um <laughs> you know Sometimes football is going to football and there's, there's things that are in my life directly and I'd like United to be very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, too right, too right. Now let's move on to the game because I like to put the game right in the middle of the podcast. I think we've gone a little bit further on than the middle, but let's crack on with the game, mate. It's very exciting. And I hope you haven't done loads of research on like the other time when we played in the FA Cup and won it and the other time and the other time because oh, it's got well, nothing to do with the game. FA Cup. I, rem I remember really enjoying the game, did no research whatsoever because I was like, oh, well, you know, I, I didn't even think to cheat. That's probably says something about my own current position is I didn't even think about cheating. <laughs> I will do next time, but I didn't this well, time. <laughs> you've got no chance of cheating this time unless you've memorised every Sheffield United footballer that's ever played for the club. I haven't, but during, do you know, during lockdown, sorry, this is a random aside. Me and my dad had a competition for who could name more players that have played for United. And because he's so much older, he said he had to name, for him to win, he had to get double the amount that I got. That was a fun game. So I know quite a few players who played for United. <laughs> so how many did you get? I'm trying to remember, to be honest. And I knew as soon as I brought it up that I was going to have to try and remember. We got hundreds and hundreds between right. us. Like... If they've played for United since about 
the year 2000, I got most of them because I was like, I, honestly, we spent weeks on it. Like the yeah. entire of lockdown, we were just sat there. Like I was just sat in a chair going, oh God, who played? Who scored against Knott's Forest? Who who played in that first game against Crew? Who did this and that? And oh, do you remember when we played? What about that cup oh. game when we scored six against Leighton Orient and Harry Chapman got at trick? Who else played? Honestly, we went through some right nonsense. <laughs> Mate, I was going to say get out more, but you, you couldn't get out more oh, at that point. I wasn't allowed. I physically wasn't allowed. <laughs> oh, right. Let's get into the game. So, mate, this is two truths, one lie. There are going to be two Sheffield United players that played for the Blades, one completely made up. Oh, I don't like You see, what I'm saying is that they're going to be made up. And because they're going to be made up, I'm going to be like, because if they were a real player who didn't, I'd be like, no, they definitely didn't. But made up ones are so hard. <laughs> no, it's it's e- I wouldn't say it's easier this time. It's not quite the same. It's not pants yeah. and shirts. So we'll get into it. So first, firstly, we've got the Morris trio. Oh, okay. Lee Morris, Stephen Morris, Colin Morris. Which one didn't play for Sheffield United? Stephen Morris. Ding, ding, ding. Well done. Well done. That was an easy one to start. Though. I answered. I was immediately like, definitely Stephen. And I was an idiot. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> right. Next up, we've got John Hoyland, Jamie Hoyland, Tommy Hoyland. Which one is incorrect? John Hoyland is incorrect. Yes, two out of two. Go on, lad. Go on, lad. You're I knew it had to this. be either John or Jamie. I knew it was one of them, and it was. Oh. I did it. Did do. Not gonna lie. That's Not right. Tommy. I knew. I don't know why, but I just knew it wasn't. I knew Tommy had played for us. That's random because Tommy Hoyland's like a really old, old, old player. Jamie yeah, Hoyland's nineties. Yeah, I know, but I, yeah, but the thing is that I knew. I knew there was a Jay Hoyland in the nineties, and I couldn't remember which one. And I didn't think you would. And then, so then I, by process of elimination, knew that Tommy had played for United. Right. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Next up, this is the easiest one of the lot. Alan Quinn, Stephen Quinn, Keith Quinn. So Keith Quinn didn't play for United. (laughs) That is true. However, Keith Quinn did play for Sheffield United, just never played a game. He's one of the the he was Quinn the one brothers. who signed one of the brothers who never never made it when we had all of them. <laughs> it was an easy one. I, I was struggling at this point. The next three, I'm hoping that you're going to have not known who a couple of these players are because you are younger than me. But Tom Ward, Ashley Ward, Mitch Ward. Which it's one's Tom the Ward. non-Ward? It's, it's, so it's Mitch Ward's birthday yesterday. And Ashley Ward, I remember. Today. So it's got to be it, Tom Ward. Damn it. Four for four. Right, how do you know that it was Mitch Ward's birthday? Because I think you tweeted it out from the Sheffield United Way channel. For those who don't follow us on Twitter. <laughs> At Sheffield United Way. Make sure you go and follow us. And finally, the final one. You could get a full house in this one. Bear in mind, it was quite an easy one. Yeah, I'm still taking it. I'm still taking it. But yeah, mm. you know. Okay. Can you get a full out, sir? So, David Barnes, Bill Barnes, oh, God. Andy Barnes. I don't remember any Barneses. Yes. David, Phil, Andy. David, Phil, Andy. Which one did not play for Sheffield United? Oh, I don't know. I don't know which. I don't know. I don't know any of them. Never heard of any of them. <laughs> well, one of these players. I remember seeing drinking in Handsworth when I was out on a night out on a Sunday night. And I knew he wasn't going to amount to anything, to be honest. Drinking in Handsworth sounds like a Phil or a Dave, doesn't it? Um, so we're going to say that Andy never played for United based entirely on the fact that <laughs> Phil and Dave sound like drinkers. <laughs> you have never got that bang on by just saying that he doesn't sound like a drinker. He doesn't sound like a drinker. Oh. <laughs> what a world. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm a little bit gutted, but also I'm a little bit happy for you that you got all the those right. logic, the expert logic that got me through that of, yeah, well, you know, Phil and Dave sound like drinkers. <laughs> <laughs> and Andy doesn't sound like a drinker. What does Andy do? Do a Sudoku? No, I, uh, 
to be honest, I'm I'm not sure my logic tracks fantastically, but Phil and Dave just sound like they drink more, maybe. Now, Andy, um, I, see, I'm thinking Andy probably sounds like a carpenter. You know what I mean? Andy's he's out there, he's doing his woodwork. Andy, Andy. He, might have a, he, he, he might have a malt or like a port. But he doesn't seem like a, he's not going to be out on his ciders in Hansworth on a Sunday night. I wish I'd not told you. <laughs> Which one of them did you see, though, in Hansworth? You said you only saw one of them, didn't you? Phil. Phil Barnes. Phil Barnes was a goalkeeper. I yeah. think he was the understudy to Paddy Kenny, either two or three, in the early 2000s, if I'm right. And he was down in pints at the bar at the Old Crown, I think it was, right at the bottom. I don't even know if Old Crown's still there. But uh, it was the old crown because you used to do karaoke there. It was amazing. It really was. Anyway, you've done it. First, second, second podcast, five for five. Whoa, 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 whoa. Love it, mate. Love it. Smashed it. Love that. That I can rest easy now. Do what you want. Talk about what you want for the rest of this show. I'm I'm done. <laughs> Mic <Mind> drop, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. Uh, let's go back into talking about stuff then, shall we? So fixture list came out it did I liked it. what what did you care I, I i'll be honest right let me just say one thing so many people get so excited about the fixture list right first and foremost you look for the first game the last game um boxing day around christmas and your birthday and then you look for runs runs of fixtures that are hard or easy where you think you can get points think where you might struggle because i think we had Man City and Liverpool really close together um, the first season we're in the Premier League. And um, none of it really excited me when I saw the fixtures come out. My birthday's not on a Saturday or whatever, so I think West Ham away was the closest. And just none of it excited me that much. And I knew that we were going to get someone mediocre for the first game of the season. What about you? Uh, You know what, though? Like... Yes, I agree in that it's not something that massively excites me, but I quite liked our fixture list this time because home first, home last, home Boxing Day, that Mm. is an absolute dream. My birthday is not on a Saturday, and I think my birthday will probably be first round at Carabao Cup. Um, So that'll be boring. Um, But yeah, it's an interesting one. I liked it because... My main thing is, last time we were in the Premier League, we had a horrible start. Mm. And we referenced it before, but we just didn't win a game until, what was it, mid-January? And so the first thing I looked at this time was, when are we going to win our first game? (laughs) And I looked at the fixtures and I thought, well, you know what? Of our first five, three of them could be a win. We could beat Crystal Palace, particularly the first game at Bramall Lane with the crowd in. We could win that game. We could win away at Forest. We could be Everton. And so I saw that there was a chance for three points relatively early in the season. And that was enough for me to go, yeah, OK, I'll take that. And then our last five that I looked at, I thought, again, there's probably three that are winnable. And so if we're still in with a chance with five games to go, there is a chance we could pick up points there to get ourselves out of it. So it didn't excite me as in like, a, oh, God, I can't wait. And da, da, da. But it excited me in the I can see where we get points and how we stay up. And we don't have any of those fixtures where it's like we aren't going to win for 10 games because we play Arsenal, Man U, Chelsea, Liverpool, City, Tottenham, Newcastle. There's none of them big, long runs in it. And so that's also quite good to see. I think I think. I think the fixtures have probably been just about as kind as they could have been. We are just, yeah. not, just not giving us one of those horrible runs, giving us a way to get off, get the season off to a start early. I quite mm. like the look of our fixtures, not that it means anything at all. No, it doesn't. No, you're right. Absolutely. I've agreed with everything you've just said then. It looks boring just to look at it. A boring season would be fantastic. Finish 15th would be boring as old. I'd take that all day long. You disagree, kind of want us to finish ninth at least. <laughs> finish fourth and just really boring, just consistent <laughs> wins, dull one nil. Let me complain. One nil to the blades, man. It's supposed to be more fun than this when you qualify for Champions League. <laughs> <laughs> That's another question for you, mate. Right? We found this season. We've just spoken about it. Not as exciting as previous seasons. 
How would it feel to be a Man City fan and nobody care that you won the, won the league? Nobody care that you won the FA Cup. And I think they got a little bit of uh, excitement from people because they won the Champions League, but all, that's only because that's the first time they've won it. Like, imagine next season, them getting to, them winning the, the league, then winning the FA Cup and getting to the final of the Champions League. No one's going to care about the treble again. No, it's a really difficult one because I feel... But then again, I suppose the other side of it is, would would I care? I think that's the, the balance that I'm trying to strike is, like, if United did it and nobody else cared, would that affect me that much? Or would I care enough? that it didn't matter. But I think the difficulty is for them, it's not just that people don't care. It's that mm. people do care and discredit it. They don't care as in they don't get excited for them, but they do care. Oh, 115 charges. Uh. Um, yeah. And so yeah. it, that's where I think it's hard, but it must feel quite like my friend. So I went to Union Manchester. I've got friends who are City fans. Um, if you ever see me speak about City, I'm going to be fairly positive about them. Quite like them. Quite like my friends as well. Um, so, you know, two two positives. <laughs> and so they don't seem to have been bothered this time. But I think if it happened next year, it will start to be like, oh, well, this is a bit same old, same old. And I think it'll really come when they don't do it. If they don't win the treble next year, I think they'll then be like, oh. What a disappointment. What a disappointing season we've had. <laughs> Could you imagine not winning three major tournaments and being disappointed? Yeah. I Can you imagine? If, if So I think for me, the bigger reflection, if they'd lost the Champions League final, they would have thought their season was a disappointment. Like it would have been a, <laughs> oh my God, what a letdown this season's been because we only won the league in FA Cup. <laughs> oh God. We're never going to be that entitled. I might be entitled, but I'll never be that entitled. I promise everybody. <laughs> We've all gone on a massive tangent here. We we really have. I'm not I'm not sure that this is I think I imagine we're gonna have a comment say, What happened? Can we have some Sheffield United banter, please, lads? Yeah, I think that's what that's what <laughs> we actually do need to do. So do you wanna start with the banter? Do I wanna start with the banter? I'm not sure I've got loads to offer for you today, to be honest. <laughs> so you can tell it's a Monday when we're recording this because apparently yeah. I'm unstructured and have lost <laughs> all focus on where we're going. <laughs> Do you know what? When I throw the um, banter comment at you, it reminded me of um, Taskmaster. Don't know if you've ever watched it. Love it. I'm currently binging through everything that put on Netflix, and I I love Taskmaster. This this throws back to um, Jeff United Way because I had an idea probably a couple of years ago, I think it was, to do different game shows about Jeff United, and Taskmaster was going to be one of them. Get loads of fans uh, in a in a stream, and then say go and get your oldest bit of memorabilia and then run off to, to whatever room in their house and bring back the oldest bit of memorabilia. Do you know what I mean? I thought it'd be an incredible... To be fair, at that point in my life, I was watching Taskmaster constantly. So I just wanted to do that. I just wanted to yeah. be the you know, Taskmaster. I just want to do Taskmaster. I did a... What was it for? It was for the Cutler Challenge. Uh, you know, where they raise money and they nominate a company who then nominate a charity and they all raise money yeah. for it and have a bit of a competition. Um, my friend was doing a lot of a range of that and they did a Taskmaster night. Um, and my my task when I was picked upon, because you did it in teams of like seven and so one person would go up for each task, mm. I had to move, what was it, 200 peas from one plate to another with a straw. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that was fun. Did you do it? I came, I think I, I think I come second. So somebody beat come me. Second, huh? Yeah, I, right. I took it. I, I weren't complaining. Like, it was surprisingly difficult and yet also yeah. a lot of fun. And it felt, you feel so invested. I was like, oh my God, this is the most important thing I've got to do today. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody sat down was like, is he having a stroke? Like, what's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, breathe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, red, complete red face. Collapses at the end. Like, oh, yeah. God, I've just not got any air. The secret task was collapsing as well. So yeah, you did yeah. well to uh, to come second and come first. Two bonus points for collapsing at the end. <laughs> uh, so you think that's a good idea to do a Taskmaster? Oh, Taskmaster? I think it's a good idea to do a Taskmaster. So I'm trying to think of what my oldest piece of memorabilia is. I think it's an old, <laughs> I've got Oliver with a Sheffield United badge on it that's like a car number plate. Uh, that I've ah. had, I think I was got when I was born. So it's as old as me. 
Um, I'll right, let the fantastic. viewers guess how old that is. <laughs> well, yeah, 40 years old. Um, so... <laughs> I think we're just about done. Uh, if you've got this far in the podcast, very, very well done, because I don't know why you're still here. <laughs> but what I will say is, if you think we should do a quiz, if you think we should do a task mass, if you think we should do things like that, uh, maybe like a family fortunes, that'd be quite cool. 100 people uh, saying who's Sheffield United's best striker of all time. Something like that. Um if you think we should do things like that, please let us know in the comments. I would absolutely love that. It'd be good if we could have like a, a Thursday quiz night or something like yeah, that, that every nice. week. But the problem when you say we'll do something every week is that you don't end up doing it every week. No, it'd have to be a, we'll do a quiz night and then arrange them as and when we are available to arrange them. I think we should also do a quiz night in person as well, maybe at Indigo Resurrection Bar as well. I would love that. That feels yeah. like that'd be me in my element. Yeah, I drinking. think that'd be really... <laughs> yeah, dr drinking yeah. and... Um, well, drinking and talking about Chef United. That's the drinking best about United. two things That's in the world. I do. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right, let's leave it there. Thank you very much, mate. As always, I'm not sure if people have got anything out of this. Let us know in the comments if you've enjoyed it. We have waffled quite a lot. I don't know what I'm going to title this, but um, let's see. Ollie and Nick go insane, the podcast. <laughs> Yes, I'm sure that'll get at least 17 views, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, my mum will watch it, so it's fine. 17 times? Oh, yeah. In fact, she might watch it 18 times. She might have to show good. all the family. Oh, good, good, good. You'd love to see it, you'd love to see it. And you won't watch it once, will you, because you don't like watching yourself? Hate watching myself, think it's the worst thing in the world. Um, we'll just refuse, yeah. Right, thank you, Ollie, as always. Uh, yeah, we'll try and do another one of these. Maybe we'll do it fortnightly during uh, the, the... Until the season starts. And then yeah, the until the season starts. Start. We can get into it a bit more. We'll have a bit more exactly. to talk about as well. And there'll be United news. Hopefully, we'll have some things to actually talk about as well in terms of transfer rumours, in terms of takeover rumours. think there should hopefully be more happening. That's the dream. The window's open. Let's see what we've got. Absolutely. Thanks for everyone watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. See you guys.